This week, we will sit with difficult texts, ask questions, seek better cultural understanding, and listen for how the, these texts line up with the God of liberation that we know. They might be rough on your ears as you listen. I invite you to hold that dissonance with curiosity as we move toward deeper questions together. Deuteronomy 22, 5. A woman must not wear men's clothing, nor a man wear women's clothing, for the Lord your God detests anyone who does this. If you're joining us on Zoom, we'll pause right now to engage the scripture. If you're watching this on YouTube, I invite you to take a minute to wonder, what did I hear in this passage? What was easy to hear? What was hard to hear? What questions do I have? In Barbara Satin's Transaction Curriculum, she writes these words. In the Bible, Deuteronomy 22.5 is the one text that speaks to anything approaching transgender. And here, most biblical scholars say the prohibition against wearing garments of the opposite sex are aimed at some specific things. One, keeping women in their place as property, or two, preserving the Jewish traditions by prohibiting other worship services where priests donned the garments of male or female de deities. Three, stopping the mixing Three, stopping the mixing of one category with another. It was prohibited, for instance, to wear a garment made of several different fabrics. In any case, the rules were aimed at preserving specific social or religious norms, not aimed at transgender people. In fact, many feel that these Old Testament laws are best fulfilled, as Christ said, by loving God and loving others as we love ourselves. And then, of course, there is Paul's proclamation. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Have you heard this biblical verse before? What did it mean to you when you first read it? Did it have an effect on what you thought about transgender persons? Does this explanation change any of your original concerns? How do you feel about this passage now? The next several passages include eunuchs. Eunuchs in the Bible are not synonymous with transgender people, but they do represent a diversity in biblical culture that stands against the traditional gender identities of masculine and feminine. In many ways, they are non-binary persons. And this diversity was not abhorred, but rather celebrated in these biblical texts. Isaiah 56, 3 through 5. Let no foreigner who is bound to the Lord say, The Lord will surely exclude me from his people. And let no eunuch complain, I am only a dry tree. For this is what the Lord says, To the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, who choose what pleases me, and hold fast to my covenant, to them I will give within my temple and its walls a memorial and a name, better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that will endure forever. If you're joining us on Zoom, we'll pause right now to engage the scripture. If you're watching this on YouTube, I invite you to take a minute to wonder, what did I hear in this passage? What was easy to hear? What was hard to hear? What questions do I have? Matthew 19, 11 through 12. Not everyone can accept this word, but only those to whom it has been given. For there are eunuchs who are born that way, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by others. 
and there are those who choose to live like eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. The one who can accept this should accept it. If you're joining us on Zoom, we'll pause right now to engage the scripture. If you're watching this on YouTube, I invite you to take a minute to wonder, what did I hear in this passage? What was easy to hear? What was hard to hear? What questions do I have? Acts 8, 27 through 38. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all of the treasury of the Kandake, which means Queen of the Ethiopians. This non-binary person had gone to Jerusalem to worship and on their way home was sitting in their chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the non-binary person reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, they said, unless someone explains it to me. You see, eunuchs and other non-binary people were excluded from the temple and so had no way to be taught scriptures. So the non-binary person invited Philip to come up and sit with them. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before a shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? And the eunuch gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized them. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on their way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Now the eunuch was a non-binary person from Ethiopia, and Ethiopia has one of the oldest Christian churches. It is likely the origin of Ethiopian Christianity is his first transmission. If you're joining us on Zoom, we'll pause right now to engage the scripture. If you're watching this on YouTube, I invite you to take a minute to wonder, what did I hear in this passage? What was easy to hear? What was hard to hear? What questions do I have? How do these passages sit with you? What stands out to you? What is easy? What is hard? What do you want to celebrate? What questions do you have? How do you think all of these passages impact Welcome Table Christian Church? How do you think we are being called to live in light of these passages?